Welcome to the JetBrains YouTube channel. In this video, we'll walk you through the main debugging capabilities of RubyMine. We'll be using a Ruby debugger to investigate the life cycle of a Ruby on Rails application, from handling requests to saving data to the database. In this tutorial, we're using the microblogging Rails application that allows users to create accounts and post messages. You can clone this application using the link in the description. Before debugging the application, make sure you've specified the Ruby interpreter and installed the gems. In our application, we're using a separate gem set. First off, we need to place breakpoints in our code. Execution of the application will be suspended at these points, and we can examine the program state, considering elements like variable values, stack frames, and so on. Open the routes.rb file and set a breakpoint next to the resources method. This method declares a standard REST resource and maps URLs to controller actions to handle requests. Then, open user's controller and place breakpoints within the new and create actions. These actions are responsible for rendering a form and submitting the form data into the database, respectively. Click the gutter icon next to the new action to open the corresponding view file. We'll place the breakpoint next to the form with helper method. Finally, open the user.rb model file and place a breakpoint within the downcase email method. This method converts the email address to lowercase before saving a user to the database. Now we are ready to start the debugging session. For running and debugging Rails applications, RubyMine automatically creates the development and production run configurations. For these configurations, you can specify various startup parameters, such as the server type, IP address and port, Rails environment, and so on. Click the Debug button on the toolbar to start the debugging session. RubyMine suggests installing the DBase and Ruby Debug IDE gems required for debugging. After installing the gems, you will be prompted to patch the Spring configuration file. This needs to be done to load the debugger and do every process forked by Spring. If necessary, you can disable Spring for the current debugging session and re-enable it later. We'll choose to update the project configuration file. The program will be stopped on the resources method call. On the frames pane, you can see the current frame stack, where each frame corresponds to a method call. Each time a method is called, a new frame is added to the top of the stack. When the execution of a method is complete, the corresponding frame is removed from the stack. As you can see, our Rails application starts booting from the bin Rails executable. Note that you can filter out the project and library frames using the filter button you can see in the top right hand corner. Let's resume the program's execution by clicking the Resume button. The console tab shows that the Rails server is started and is listening on the 3000 port. Open the application in the browser and click Sign Up Now. This time, the debugging session will be suspended on the new action, which handles rendering for the signup page. If you switch to the Debugger tab, you will see that the user variable is nil, since it has not yet been initialized. You can also see the action controller parameters here. Let's add them to watches to track their values throughout the application lifecycle. If you click Resume, the application will be stopped in a view corresponding to the new action. You can hover over the user variable in the editor to see that it is initialized now. The action controller parameters haven't changed yet. Clicking the Resume button again opens the signup page. Let's create a sample JetBrains user. When you click Create My Account, the debugging session is stopped in the Create action. The set form data can be fetched using action controller parameters. Let's step through the program. Step over allows you to go to the next line, while step into enables you to enter the methods invoked along the way. Click step into or press F7. RubyMind suggests that you select between the user params and new methods. Select user params and press enter to jump to the method definition. Note that you can not only jump to project entities, but also to definitions within external libraries. Enable showing external calls first and then press F7. Choose the params action controller method and press enter. RubyMine will open the method definition in the strong parameters module. Now go back to the line within the create action where the user is saved. 
you can place the caret here and click the Run to Cursor button to continue the execution until this line is reached. The user variable is now initialized and uses attribute values received from the action controller parameters. You can examine the user object right in the editor, or you can do this in the interactive debugging console. The console prompt can be disabled or enabled using a corresponding button on the toolbar. Let's take a look at the user's email here. If you click Resume Now, Rails begins an active record transaction responsible for saving a user. The application stops in the downcase email method, which converts the email address to lowercase before saving the user to a database. Let's check the expression value in the console. You can also evaluate this expression in the editor by selecting it and pressing Alt Command F8 on Mac OS or Control Alt F8 on Windows or Linux. Click Resume. The user will be saved to the database. Let's take a look at the breakpoint options. For each breakpoint, you can configure additional properties. You can enable or disable it, specify a condition for hitting a breakpoint, and so on. The caret is now placed at the breakpoint within the downcase email method. You can open the breakpoint properties by pressing Shift Command 8 on Mac OS or Alt Shift F8 on Windows or Linux. Pressing this shortcut again invokes the breakpoints dialog with all breakpoints set in our application. Let's disable all of them except the one within the create action. The breakpoint has multiple options. For example, suspend pauses the program execution when a breakpoint is hit. If necessary, you can disable this checkbox to obtain logging information or calculate an expression at a certain point without interrupting the program. For example, you can use Evaluate and Log to evaluate an expression when the breakpoint is hit and show the result in the console output. The Condition option allows you to specify a condition for hitting a breakpoint. Let's enable it and add the condition where a username is equal to RubyMine. Click Done to save the settings. You can see the breakpoint is marked with the question mark since it has a condition. Let's drag the breakpoint one line below. Now, if you create a user whose name doesn't match the condition, the breakpoint will not be hit. However, creating a user with the name RubyMine suspends the application at the breakpoint. Let's look at another useful tip for working with breakpoints. Imagine you've specified various properties of a breakpoint and then accidentally removed it. To restore it, add a new breakpoint at this line, right-click it, and click Restore Previous Breakpoint. The breakpoint will be restored with all the original settings. And that's it! You can learn more about debugging from our documentation. Thanks for watching!